Hi, welcome to the latest um, video, Irish Ancestors video. Um, today, I'm going to talk about um, something we've just launched on the site, new civil parish maps. And I'm going to talk about civil parishes uh, because of that as well. So let's go straight to the site so I can use my, my visual cues. Um, here we are at the home page and the way in the civil parish maps this is the free section still, so we're all, all good to go. You tap on a county to see its civil parishes. Um, the main change is that these are now vector, what they call vector maps. In other words, you can zoom in, wee, or zoom out, woo. Okay, also, um, you'll notice that the, the, it's all in wonderful living color. This is all hand done by me with my crayons over the past few weeks. Um, the, the reason behind it is actually quite functional. It's quite important to see where one parish ends and another begins. Lots of parishes have more than one part and that the color coding helps to, to identify what they are. Let me show you some of what you can do. Um, my own family originally came from the parish of Moore in South Roscommon, so we zoom in. And you'll notice now, unlike the other maps, um, there are, the townlands are listed here, and here a shout out to townlands.ie um, open street map. Then we've used their data, and um, you know we've we've tarted it up and and um, done a fair amount of work on it. But it's basically wouldn't have been possible without them. So thank you very much to them. But here that you can zoom in, and you can see, for example, that townland there. That's where my great 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 grandfather was a farmer. And one of the things I love about the parish of Moore is that it also has the townland of America right there. So when they emigrated, they just had to go across three or four fields and they were in America. It also has a wonderful townland called Liberty. Um, I suspect these townlands were named sometime around the, the time of the American Revolution. Um, Moore was noted as a hotbed of um, revolutionary activity by the, the, the English authorities. And I think that these townland names reflect that. Um, I've never been able to confirm it, but it seems um, seems quite likely. Anyway, um, back to the, the maps. One of the other things that features about the maps, let's go back to the, the index page. Uh, Antrim demonstrates something um, very nice about them. We've actually done them over uh, a terrain, a hill shading. You can see the mountains there in Donegal um, and in Derry and Tyrone, the Sperrins. If you zoom in, you can see some of the reasons. For example, there, Grange of Laid, there is a mountain. That's the border. That's the reason why the people in the townland of Cashlan in Laid are unlikely to be marrying the people in the townland of Brockas, even though they're adjoining, because there's a bloody mountain in the way. Okay, so Again, the, the shading is functional. It serves a purpose. It helps to um, to identify reasons, possible circumstantial evidence for um, um, why the townlands are here, why the borders are there, who's likely to be marrying whom. Another one I like here is um, this. All the townlands converge on the pinnacle of Knocklaid Mountain. So they all run up the mountain. Um, and run back down again. Um, you can see this, it's the same for the parish of Ramon and the parish of Armoy. Anyway, again, like the old parish maps, um, you can simply click anywhere in there and go into the page devoted to that civil parish. So you get the same map, but you get it zoomed in up close and centred. Um, you can also, if I go back to this, um, you can get a list. So if you're not sure where in in uh, Antrim the parish of Coolfectron is, you can click on this and it'll show you, it'll center, it'll zoom in. There's Coolfectron just there. Um, and again, you get a list of all the place names. You can click on the place name to go to the Griffiths record, click on 1901 to go to the census, 1911, the same. Um, you'll notice that these, if you haven't used these for a while, they're slightly different. They're designed to be um, mobile friendly, cell phone friendly. Okay, so that they're, they're slightly bigger. There's not as much text jamming up the page. 
there's more eye candy um, and I think they're easier to use, especially for uh, for people using phones, smartphones. Um, civil parishes, if you're not uh, aware of why these things are important, um, the reason is this. OK, research sources before they were abolished, um, almost entirely abolished at the end of the 19th century, um, civil parishes were the way all of the um, the records were organized. They were called civil parishes because they descended from the old medieval church parishes. Um, and they were taken over by the Church of Ireland after the Reformation, after the Reformation was brought to Ireland. Um, and because the Church of Ireland, the Anglican Church in Ireland, because the Anglican Church was an arm of the British state and still is, it's the established church. It was the established church in Ireland until the 1870s. Um, it became its geographical divisions became the geographical divisions that the state used to collect tax, to um, carry out censuses, to um, you know, to, to uh, collect wills, so on and so forth, to record wills. So it, this is why civil parishes are important. It has to be said for the majority of the people living in them at the time they were being used to collect records, they were irrelevant. OK, unless you are actually a member of the Anglican Church, um, they meant very little. They, they, I mean, the most if you had to pay tithes to the local Anglican clergyman, then it was important what civil parish you lived in. But otherwise, no. OK, Catholics were focused on the Catholic parish, which is a totally different beast, generally much bigger, much more fluid. Uh, Presbyterians, the other, the second big denomination on the island, um, saw parishes as ab abominations, as um you know, evidence of the the the, the rule of Rome in the Anglican Church as um, you know the hierarchy, a way of standing between a believer and his God. Um, so that they certainly didn't pay, place any any mind on civil parishes. So the only people who had actually um, an interest in them were members of the Anglican Church and members of the the, the government administration because that's how they were organised. So it's worth keeping that in mind um, if you're wondering. Um, why why they are so strange? Um, uh, they, I've I've mentioned the credit already. Um, um, OpenStreetMap and Townlands.ie. I think I have. They're they're the the. It's their townlands that are displayed on the map. One of the peculiarities is that the townland lists here are not quite the same as the townland lists um, on the map. I think ours are more accurate, but. Um, I'll arm wrestle with the people on townlands.ie about that at a later stage. Um, the one thing I will say is that um, it's it's uh, been a great relief to get the damn things done. OK, it turned into a much bigger project than I thought it was going to be. Um, but it's quite satisfying to see it finished finally. The last thing I, I'd like to say is that these things are quite big. Um, if you go, for example, let me go back to this. If you go into a big county, as in the biggest county, Cork, um, you're actually, when you're looking at this, you're downloading over 10 megabytes of JavaScript just to display this. And uh, if you're on a, a, a poor phone connection, that can take a while. So be patient. Um, I think um, I think it's worth it. I think they, uh, it, it, it sheds all sorts of wonderful light on um, how the parishes were um, constituted, for example, let me show you my favourite weirdity of in the parish of Shrule in County Mayo, and then I will let you go. Um, the parish of Shrule, here we are. Um, I think Shrule, come here to me, Shrule. Okay, there we are. There's the parish of Shrule. OK, there's the parish of Shrule and the adjoining parish of Kilmain Beg. But inside the parish of Shrule, there's a piece of Kilmain Beg, these two townlands, uh, Balashnahaini and Karahutara. And look, inside Karahutara, there's another piece of Shrule. This is uh, one of the things about these civil parishes is because they're so old, because they date from the Middle Ages, bits of them fell off. When you get old, as I know to my horror, um, bits of you start to fall off. So the civil parishes, bits of them fell off, bits of them were 
left by a, a farmer to the, the the people in the next parish. So all sorts of oddities. When you have them coded by colour like this, they jump out at you. The differences jump out at you, and they're quite important because somebody who's in the parish in the townland of Karahutara will be recorded in the tithe books for Car for Kilmain Beg. Not sure, even though he's in an area that's completely surrounded by Shrew. So it's worth knowing these things. OK, um, I think they're they're uh, wonderful eye candy as well as everything else. Um, but I do think that they, what we've done makes them uh, makes them easier to use, makes them more functional. And I hope you have a, 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 I hope you have more fun using them than I had. Making them. Anyway, thank you for watching.